Baghdad was almost completely closed off from the outside world for 40 years. After decades spent in war in 2021, however, they reopened e-visas for travelers. And since then, I haven't been able to stop thinking about this city. Baghdad to my generation has only been synonymous with conflict. But as I've deepened my understanding of history and of the world, it became quite clear to me that without this region, we may not have the modern society we all live in today. Baghdad was not only once the intellectual center of the Islamic world, where it was once only the brightest who were given the honor to come study in their prestigious ancient universities, but it was also thousands of years further back, the center of Mesopotamia considered the birthplace of modern civilization. And so how can it have taken such a dark turn? Places like Baghdad filled with contrasts and paradoxes, I believe have the most to teach us about our world. And I believe have the most powerful stories to be told. But making it there despite its recent stability turned out to be much more complicated than I had hoped. In fact, it's taken me two years and several cancellations with the main trip being canceled after the Swedish embassy was overrun and being a Swedish passport holder definitely made me not feel safe enough to go. There's never really a window of time where you can 100% guarantee that you'll be fine at traveling to a city like Baghdad. The warnings on all embassy websites have stayed at the maximum level for my entire adult life. But a few weeks ago, after years of contemplation, I received a very special invitation to come back to this region that I couldn't say no to. And so I finally took the leap I'd been waiting for so long to take. I'm signing up for quite the adventure and I can't wait. So it begins. Okay, yeah. Almost four years later, heading back to Iraq. I always have problems taking you off. Oh, you do? You're good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going alone because Amar already has enough trouble with his passport that adding an Iraqi stamp would not be wise. And as Stefan doesn't have a US visa, it would make his travel there much more complicated in the future. Iraq is split into two regions, the autonomous northern part of Kurdistan, where I traveled to in 2020, and the southern part where Baghdad is. And it's the southern part that's been the most difficult to enter, where I'll be going tomorrow. First, I have one of the most special events I've ever been invited to, to attend in the northern region of Kurdistan. Thank you. It feels good to be back. How are we doing? Good. When was the last time you were in Kurdistan? A couple of months ago, actually. And it's your second time. Yeah. I'm excited to tell this story together. Definitely an interesting trip. Oh, this is very cute. Oh. Airport arrivals is one of the sweetest things in it's Eid here, which is the holiest holiday uh, in Islam. So it's like Christmas time and families are reuniting. Very beautiful to see. Four years ago, I met a subscriber called Zaim. He's part of a religious and ethnic minority group called the Yazidis. Yazidis are one of the oldest active religions in the world, dating back to Mesopotamian times. While ISIS was ravaging through this part of the country, they specifically targeted the Yazidis. And so had Saddam Hussein before them. Having survived many genocides, the few that are miraculously left are doing what they can to rebuild their communities and preserve their heritage. And so a wedding here is an amazing moment for the Yazidis. A few months ago, Zaim took a shot in the dark and invited me. And when I told him I was considering going, the excitement I heard in his voice made me feel like I had no other choice but to go. Looks like I'm coming to your wedding, man. Man, man, oh my God. Thank you, man, thank you. Zaim, I love you, bro. Hey, nice to meet you. How are you? How are you? So you are one of Zaim's best friends, huh? Yes. Are you ready for the wedding? Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. But a mandatory first stop, whether you land during the day or at midnight like I am, is the best kebab in the city. Are you guys hungry? Kebab Suleiman. Oh, Suleiman. Yeah. So Last time I checked, the best kebab was Yasin. Yasin, not, not Yasin. Suleiman <laughs> <laughs> is the best. <laughs> <laughs> there is clearly beef here that's very serious. Welcome back to Kurdistan. I'm so excited that we're starting with a kebab. Best way to, to start a trip like this. I'm 
relearning something, which is that it's impossible to pay for anything in this country. They see it as a as an absolute sign of hospitality to pay. I'm trying to, but he, he's like, there's no way you're paying. This is my new friend. Mohammed. What, what's your name? Mohammed. Mohammed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Great. <laughs> Right now we are in Badr, the capital of Yazidis. Zaim have been waiting for us for like two hours. He hasn't slept. <laughs> so, the day before his wedding, yeah. I feel terrible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at this guy. Is this really your house? Is this really? <laughs> You're getting married tomorrow. <laughs> you shouldn't go to bed. <laughs> I'm waiting for you. Dude. Oh man, so good to see you. A room? Yeah. So this is one room. Okay. This is my room. Another room, another room, wow. another room, another room, and there is your room upstairs. I've prepared it for you. All good. Zaim is a very unique human. He'd never really say it himself, but his friends told me he was essentially the best student in the region. He's been giving tours of his area for free in his free time to travelers coming to visit, teaching people about his culture, and someone that I've stayed in touch with over the years after meeting him all this time ago. Did you believe that we'd be seeing each other again so soon? Never believed it. Yeah. Never, never ever believed it. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Here we go. It's gonna be crazy. Like, legit crazy. Your weddings, the maximum amount of people is like 100. Our weddings? 1,500. That's not possible. This is the minimum we have. I don't, I don't think that when we started this channel, we could have ever thought that it would reach Kurdistan <laughs> like, and, and Yazidis. And... Now it has become a lifestyle for many, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the word sick discomfort. We have put it in our daily life. Like just today, a friend of mine, he was a bit hesitant to come to my wedding or not. I just sent him one word, sick discomfort. I came home, he was there. He wow. came all the way from a city that's like two hours away. My fiance told me, Zaim, it was one wedding for you, but now it's two weddings because Thomas is coming as well. <laughs> My happiness became too big happiness, you know? It's something crazy, seriously. Oh, I love it. What you quickly notice when you arrive in Iraq, however, is first that everyone you meet wants you to feel welcome. But as you speak to them and hear their story, you also get confronted to the fact that they all carry a terrible and difficult story of loss that they or their family has had to overcome. I actually realized when you started talking that I didn't know the story about who you were named after. My name is Zaim, yeah. which literally means boss. This name is, is very special for me because <clears throat> it belongs to, to my uncle. My uncle, he got executed by Saddam Hussein. They put my dad in the prison for, for seven years. He was in the beginning of his college education. He didn't complete it. Even they tortured two of my uncles to an extent where one of them is not uh, very stable. When my dad came out of prison, he continued his education after seven years, even though he was the oldest at his group. Still, he finished his college, so he started from zero. Until here, now I'm his son and I'm getting married tomorrow. So um, He must be a proud dad. He is, he is very proud. So mm. today, <clears throat> he was very happy. I was looking at him and suddenly I had that thing with that thought in my mind, I was like, yeah, he has been through a lot and he deserves his happiness. I'm his son and he has educated me in this way to, to stick to this place, Badr, which is, which is a village that belongs to Yazidis. It's the capital of Yazidis, actually. But, unfortunately, from 2014 until now, the real people of Badr, less than 30% are left. The main reason is security. Uh, after the ISIS attack on Yazidis, the genocide, no one feels safe. I don't want to raise my children somewhere where they don't know about their roots. Because I'm representing you still right here. Seriously. No, I'm representing you still right here. So I have to, I'm responsible for it. I know when you are in Paris or in America, but I'm here. Even if you tell me no, yes, still here, I'm responsible for me still here. Well, Zayn, you're the best representative yes, there you could have had in the region, so. Thank you, man. All right, good night, sir. Good night, good night. See you at the wedding. See you tomorrow. See you. See you. See you. <laughs> See you. Good
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is the wedding day that I've come all the way back to Kurdistan for. Based on the music that I'm hearing downstairs as I was up here getting changed, I think it's already started. Yeah. We have a it's crew. the first wedding in the house. Yes. Really? Yes. Since 90s, maybe. The, the wedding celebrations have begun. Brother, get it with me. <laughs> wow. I'm in the car of the prince. I'm realizing I haven't worn my suit in a while and it's a little tighter than I remember around the waist. Who would have thought a suit would shrink while it's just sitting in your closet, right? How you feeling, man? I'm feeling stressed, but in the same time, happy because I know in a few hours I'm going to forget all of this. I've been preparing for this for six months. I'm just trying like to control my feelings. <laughs> it's it's some weird feelings that I've never had in my life. Never ever. There is discomfort at the same time, but also I'm enjoying it. So that's why it's it's yeah, it's confusing. It's confusing. It's very confusing. This is gonna be a massive party, I feel. So he's here to pick up his fiance for the very last time from her home. And then after that, she will move in with him and his family. He's nervous, he's very nervous. Who wouldn't be? so much joy here. My cheeks are hurting. I'm smiling so much. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to meet you. Same here. Thank you guys you are beautiful. So much. Both of you. Thank you so much. So honored to be here. Thank you so much. Is this one? Are you sure? Oh my god. I'm getting it. I feel very honored right now. Ultimate third wheel. <laughs> Oh, you're joining us too! Yes. I can't believe I'm in your car right now. <laughs> I never kissed that too, man. Never ever. You achieved two dreams in one day. I told you, yeah. two dreams in one day. God, this is it? That is so many people. 
<laughs> uh, how are you guys feeling? Feeling okay? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's gonna be a busy wedding. I'm sorry about that. And the party restarts. Dancing resumes. Oh. It's one of my dreams to meet you here <laughs> And it's crazy that I meet you in Zain's wedding yeah. One of my best friend's wedding Oh, here they come Uh, a pretty magical start of my trip back here. I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous to go to Baghdad tomorrow. I'm getting mixed reactions when I tell people I'm going there. People telling me it's not the same as here. So um, I will see how it goes and I look forward to uh, the journey onto the place that I've been trying to get to for so many years for the trip tomorrow. What's up, man? Come to inside to dance, come on. Okay, I'm coming, yeah. I'm coming. It's impossible to be, not be dancing here at all times. journey to Baghdad begins. We're driving back down to Erbil. From there I have to leave the country to Amman and then fly back to Iraq. Kurdistan and South Iraq have different visas so I have to come back from the international terminal. A little bit complicated but uh, let the journey to Baghdad begin. Yeah. Thank you so much for everything. You're welcome, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being here and hopefully you can see you next time. I hope so too. And six six discomfort. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See you there. Right, take care man. See you. See you man. Bye bye. foot for the first time in Baghdad, Iraq. How are you? Nice to meet you. My name is Fazil. Fazil, nice to meet you. <laughs> you are? <laughs> Going on, that's one of the first 
impressions I got. And I'm um, surprised by what the city looks like. Looks like there's a lot of new and modern buildings, which I'm very eager to explore. One of these is my hotel, right here. Okay. Wow. It is hot here in Baghdad, about 30 degrees Celsius. Hi, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Yes. This is my local guide and friend Aya. We met through social media over a year ago. Her life story is one of the more complex and courageous that I'd heard, and I was excited to get to discover her city alongside her. I'm no longer a ghost. I'm messaging you, telling you I'm coming and never coming. Yeah. We're actually here. One year? One oh year. my god. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, sir. How was your uh, arrival? Actually, people were very friendly. The, all the border guards were calling me Habibi, which always makes me feel welcome, you know? And I was expecting it to be a little intimidating, but it wasn't at all. Like, last two years, like, things started to open up more. How does that feel for you being somebody who obviously brings visitors here? Who thought Iraq has been, like, closed from the rest of the world, like, isolated for, like, 40 years? So this is what I like to see, like, we have a lot to see in Iraq. The culture itself is very different from the rest of the world and so on. So I'm happy to see that change and I'm happy to be part of that change, honestly. Yeah. So the streets here are organized in an interesting way where they bundle shops on specific streets so one street is for mechanic shops one street is for clothes is there a reason why they do it that way that's the old way of like bazaar like market i guess it's just convenient to know this is where i go if i need xyz yeah, exactly. okay ladies and gentlemen welcome in the streets of baghdad we're going to be exploring old baghdad today unfortunately a good amount of it has been kept unmaintained because of all the wars and there's recent efforts to try to rebuild it, to renovate it, to bring it back to its former glory. So there's no sidewalks here, right? Every, everyone for themselves? Yeah. Okay, it's like a game of chicken. You just gotta start walking and, and hope that they stop. Baghdad is a little bit um, chaotic. Chaotic, it's... The energy here has been dialed up. Oh wow, this guy's got bread on his head. That is a brave way to carry an open plate of bread. Oh my god, this is incredible. The copper market was an important historical place and source of income for many in Baghdad. Unfortunately, with the wars, the amount of visitors and sales made here have diminished greatly, and only few are still left. No. This is you? Are you serious? This is you? My picture when I am 18 years. 18? Now I am 82. 82? 82. So you look amazing. I put you in my heart. Hello. More than 70 years I work here. 70 years? With my father. Wow. And, and I, I like to speak with the people. I love him. I put you in my heart. I you. You. And after bonding, it became a duel between a man with 70 years of sales experience and another man who's definitely about to get sold a carpet. This one is bigger though. It's bigger. It's more than 120 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to think about where I would put it in my house. This is not very nice and I give you the price. Uh-huh. I'm getting hustled here, but it, the carpets are nice. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good luck with you and when you go to Paris. Paris before 200 years. All the king I like. <laughs> I told Kursi, for you, present. <laughs> this is for you, present. You like this for Madame, you like. Yeah. I put you in my hand. Good luck. I keep you. getting adopted. Thank you so much. Shukran. I bought a carpet, so I don't know where I'm gonna put it though. My apartment is not that big, but I'll find a space for it. Hey, I hope that you are enjoying this short documentary. We are about to go a whole lot deeper into Baghdad, including exploring one of Saddam Hussein's abandoned palaces. But first, we created an epic commercial for our brand new Seek Discomfort drop called In This Together that we specifically created for this video. So, please enjoy. In the vast canvas of the cosmos, among the swirling galaxies and infinite stars, there spins a tiny planet. Earth, our shared home, pale, fragile, 
miraculous. This is where every human story has been written, where every act of bravery, love, and curiosity has unfolded. You, me, all of us here now, a masterstroke of astronomical probabilities, which makes every breath we take an act of defiance against the impossible cosmic odds. Imagine winning a lottery where the odds are one in one trillion, and then winning that same lottery one million times in a row. That's the probability of you being alive right now. Now imagine the likelihood that your sibling, your neighbor, your best friend, your parents, and you are all on this planet at the same time. Add to it all of the strangers you walk by every day. These are impossible odds. And you can respond to that in one of two ways. Hide, play it safe, cave to fear, turn off or numb it out, or face it daringly, radically conscious in every waking moment. Feel the sacredness inside the pain. Embrace the time-slowing vortex of love and grief. Appreciate the bizarre but beautiful world around us. You were never meant to be a passenger on this spinning rock. You were born to rise up and become a member of the crew. Honor the unfathomable unlikelihood of your existence. Seek discomfort, say yes, choose love. And embrace the miracle of life now. And when you lose sight of the light, look around at your crewmates. We're in this together. What I quickly noticed while walking around is that I clearly stand out like a sore thumb. At first, I wasn't sure how our cameras would be received by the locals. But no matter where we went, people seemed excited to see me. You have an amazing laugh. Amazing. Nice to meet you. Allah. <laughs> Allah. A Swedish? Swedish, yeah. Swedish? I love the shark. I love the shark with Arafi. Little mommy James. I shot my wig, Habibi. Allah. The best laugh in the world. Allah. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Are you having <laughs> gathering or what? No, just exploring. Yeah, have fun in Baghdad. Thanks, bro. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, see. I love you. I love you. I love you. People here are very unbothered by the camera, actually. I thought it would be stricter than Kurdistan, but people are actually kind of happy to be on camera more than the other way around. Only problem with me for the team was that I was developing a serious kebab addiction while in the country. This is exactly what I wanted right now. I don't know if you, the viewer, can really feel my excitement in this moment. It's about to be a pretty incredible shawarma. I can feel it. You know, I might have two of these, but let's see. That's so much better than I even thought it would be. Yeah? As we explored the city, it became clear to me that Iraq's troubles with foreign invasions is not only a recent problem, but really it's been happening for centuries. And one of the most catastrophic events in the history of the Middle East was in fact the Mongols' invasion and complete destruction of Baghdad in 1258. At the time, Baghdad was the capital of the Abbasid Caliphate and one of the most significant cultural, intellectual, and economic centers in the Islamic world. The Mongol Empire, however, under the rule of Genghis Khan, had aggressively expanded into the largest in history. Eventually, Genghis Khan's grandson Hulagu decided to invade Baghdad. They breached the city walls and massacred a large portion of the population, with estimates ranging from 100,000 to over a million deaths. In the process, they also destroyed many of Baghdad's architectural and cultural landmarks. The city's libraries, including the famed House of Wisdom, were burned leading to an enormous loss of knowledge and cultural heritage. Iraq has just always been like in the middle between so many massive yeah. empires and just caught in the crossfires. Only parts of these ancient incredible sites, now renovated, still remain. And one can only dream of what the city must have been like and grieve the very evident loss of knowledge from the time. Do you know what these rooms were for? There is no like information and documentation about it. Hmm. So it's a bunch of mixed opinions. That's the thing that we forget about some of these ancient places. You could see like just little spots of it with colors left and just think back at how probably beautiful it was back in the day in its prime. He 
it was the first and the biggest higher education type of universities in this area. People from all around the world used to come here. If you speak some Arabic words back in that time, it was like a show of that you are educated. Exploring the inside of this ancient university, pretty spectacular building. And it is the noon call to prayer going on at the same time, which is pretty magical backdrop as we walk around. The holes in the ceiling, I guess, were the old, the, the original air conditioning. It's very cool in here. Even in the summer, this place stays cool. Yeah. Really? Genius engineering. There are so many rooms in this ancient university. It's pretty fascinating to try to imagine all the students that would come here from around the world to study back in the day. I'm willing to bet a lot of money that few people clicked on this video was expecting to see this in Baghdad. Just kids playing and families out. So what is this river right here? So uh, Iraq is called uh, Bilad Ma Bain al Nahrain, which is, means the country between the two rivers, and this is the Tigris River. This river was very important during the Mesopotamian times yes, as well, exactly, right? Yeah. yeah, they used to build their cities by the river, yeah. because where is water, there is life. Yeah. So yeah, this is why it's called like uh, Ah, what's, we, your name? what's your name? Thomas. Tom. Uh, you? What's your name? Munir. Munir. I'm Munir. Munir. And you? Ali. 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 France. France. Yeah. How did you guess? Paris. Yes. Then, Dali Ali, Kilian Mbappe, Kilian Mbappe. Let's go. Nice to meet you. Paris. Nice to meet you. I want to see your family. You took me Hey. Yeah. Ali. Okay. Let's go. I thought people would be shy with the cameras, but apparently not. <laughs> Hopefully the parents are okay with this. <laughs> Paris, France, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Mrs. Didan. Mrs. Didan. Nice to meet you. This is uh, traditional Iraqi. Oh, amazing. I have so many cookies here. Before I'm even finished with one, I get another one fed to me. I am. I feel very well taken care of, actually. <laughs> من أي بلد يجي خلي يشوف بعينه ليش لأن إحنا العراقيين طيبين والحمد لله والشكر الله يديمها إن شاء الله على هاي النعمة إن شاء الله عجيات هتلقانه إن شاء الله توينز yes when I come back that would be amazing bye bye lunch with me lunch with you yeah yeah what's your name Karim Karim I'm Thomas 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 oh Wow, that's a lot. It's very good. It's very good. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's amazing. It's a good thing. 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 Thank you very much. Enjoy the fish and... and we come in Baghdad. Oh, thank you. Wow. Is this like common? What just happened? Yeah. yeah. This is common? Yeah, it's kind of common, yeah. Wow. I feel very welcome. Yeah? Immediately, yeah. And I think it seems like people are also excited to see that there are visitors. Yeah. Tonight, Iran's much-anticipated attack on Israel is unfolding. Dozens of drones have been launched from Iran and were most recently seen over northeastern Iraq. After a warm and welcoming first day, I woke up to about 30 notifications of anxious friends from some pretty worrying news. Iran launched a large scale of coordinated attack on Israel. On the news, it certainly did not look good. In a situation like this, however, we decided to not panic as our team back home looked for eventual backup options of leaving the country by land. For now, there were no signs to worry any further, and we decided to carry on with our trip and not let this distract us from the story we're here to tell. Today is day two here in Baghdad. Iran just attacked Israel. The implications at the moment are that uh, Iraq closed its airspace, so it means that all the flights leaving last night were cancelled. Obviously, these are the kinds of situations you have to be aware of 
um, when you travel to sensitive regions. But we will be keeping an eye out and hoping it doesn't drastically escalate. As we drive around the center of the city, the scars of the 2003 US invasion of Iraq can still be found everywhere. At the time, the country was run by the ruthless and notorious dictator Saddam Hussein. During his 24-year rule, he had not only targeted several ethnic groups in his own country, but also pulled Iraq into several wars with its neighboring countries and broken endless international laws with illegal chemical weapons used even on his own people. The US, led by George W. Bush, following 9-11, made the claims, however, that Iraq was hiding weapons of mass destruction and had ties with the terrorists of the horrible tragedy on American soil, both claims which were proven to be false. Despite the broader public around the world deeply disagreeing with this new war, the US still proceeded. They succeeded at removing and executing Saddam Hussein, but having absolutely no transition plan for future leadership in the country, what followed was a brutal civil war and many years of suffering. The consequences of this senseless war echoes to this day, as these conflicts eventually are what gave birth to ISIS in the north of Iraq and Syria. Many believe that this invasion is likely to go down in the history books as one of the more controversial decisions in American foreign policy. Saddam Hussein's unchecked power throughout this time, however, had led him to build endless palaces and homes for himself throughout the country. And there's one abandoned one in particular that still stands that we're on our way to explore right now. This is one of Saddam Hussein's abandoned palaces. He has basically one or two palaces in most major Iraqi cities. Allegedly, he only spent one night in this palace, which is ridiculous. inhabitants of this palace now. There's a handful of pigeons living in the giant chandelier up atop. This is actually in better condition with all the woodwork still here than I thought. Most of the other white walls, however, are completely graffitied and destroyed. Even though there's beauty, of course, in the details, just knowing what it took to do it and the time that it was made. Just endless corners, twists, turns. Can't even imagine what every room was used for. Welcome to Saddam Hussein's abandoned bedroom. The scale of this palace is absolutely blowing my mind. Even as we rolled up, I didn't realize how huge this is. We've already been here for like at least 40 minutes and it feels like we've barely scratched the surface. Hotel and, like, yeah. museum. It's very mixed feelings, you know, you can tell that it was probably beautiful at one point in time, but there's also, it feels very eerie. As interesting as it would be to still turn it into something, don't know if I would stay here as a customer. It's always mixed feelings. It's both interesting, but at the same time, this unease and discomfort that is just being here. What are those symbols? That's his initials. Those are his initials? Yeah. Holy shit. I guess these are the kind of rooms you build when you have unlimited budget and unchecked power. A bit conflicted because when you look at it like this, it's actually a really gorgeous location. Right in front of the ancient city of Babylon, in front of this river, buffaloes are swimming in the distance. And apparently he wiped a village that was located here to build this and removed everybody and placed them somewhere else nearby. The painting still looks brand Pretty new, new yeah. brand new, yeah. completely unaffected. It would take an enormous effort to recreate this. And so this, what is this for? Uh, this is actually like a throne. A throne. I understand why people come and do graffiti and just don't care at all about a place like this. I feel like after what you've lived through, you just come and damage it as much as you can. People come as an act of revenge. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. 
And a video like this doesn't get sponsors, unfortunately, understandably so. Sensitive topics, challenging conversations, and this video is only made possible through our clothing, Seek Discomfort. And I'm actually wanting to take this opportunity to plant a seed for one of my biggest dreams in my 30s. I turned 30 last year, and one of my top three goals is to empower education for people who were not as fortunate as I was to get a great and a free education. Iraq has been a place that I've been very inspired by. We are just starting a relationship with Save the Children who have many projects out in this area. A dream for me would one day open a school. And what I want from this drop is for it to plant a seed for education in this country that I'm now learning to appreciate so much more. To make this happen and have this seed grow, for the next week, we will be donating 10% of profits of all items, including our new collection and even the items on sales. But as you know, in the world at the moment, we need to step up even more. With this in mind, we've created a very special t-shirt, the Human Being t-shirt. And for the month of June, 100% of the profits from this shirt will be donated to Save the Children, Crisis Aid, and the Hunger Project. We created this shirt as a reminder to everyone that we all deserve to be treated as human beings. And we hope you will be able to support us by checking out the broader drop and supporting us in this effort. Your support means the world. Truly, this channel would not exist without Seek Discomfort. It would not ever give us the freedom that we have to just film the stories we want and the places that we want. Okay, let's go see what we can find. And again, appreciate any and all of your support. Normally you would do wudu, which is the wash, yeah. so let's wash up. Yeah. So before going to pray, people wash their face, wash their feet, wash their hands. It's called wudu. I go bachar al Yeah, Bellingham. Bellingham. This is not any mosque, this is uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadr al Gailani. He's a, a Sufi Imam, so this is his shrine and his mosque at the same time. So people come here not only to pray but to visit his shrine. And you, where are you from? Iraq. This is gorgeous. He's inviting you to his house for dinner. <laughs> the sky is pink and blue in the sky for sunset. The mosque is beautifully lit up. Families are out eating, picnicking, and people are inside praying. And a lot of people are quite curious about me walking around with the camera, but it's in a positive way. It feels like people people want to come up and say hi. Hello. 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 Iraqi kids are adorable. <laughs> now we have to take our shoes off and enter the mall. Yeah, it was really funny. There was a sign outside that says the good smell with an, a line with a picture of a, of a garlic and a line over it to say like, don't be stinky when you come in. This is absolutely stunning. This room is insane. This is one of the most beautiful entrances I've, I've seen in a building before. Called the yes theory. Yes theory. Yes theory. Yes theory. Yes. Yes on that. Okay. Nice to meet you, Thomas. Yes. So we are going to enjoy a concert right here, right? Yeah. Over Amazing. There. Before we were about to experience something that I don't think many have seen or captured in Baghdad before, I wanted to take a moment to sit down with Aya and ask her more about her life growing up in Iraq. You were born in, in Baghdad? Yeah, 2000. 2000? Yeah. So that was just a few years before, uh, before the US invasion? They, yeah. Do you have memories from before? Yeah, I do. There is one memory that I can never forget. We were sitting in the house, and there is a rocket that fell in houses nearby, and there was like so many shooting and stuff. That was like three, four, I'm not sure. And my mother was also freaking out, and she came and she closed our like ears, and my father and my other brothers. So yeah, this is like the scene I can never forget. 
and there is also one memory of like in the hot summer time in Iraq we usually sleep in the living room the biggest room there were like soldiers who like just kicked the door and came into our house with dogs in the night like midnight I woke up and I see the soldiers with the gun and actually the dogs just above our head so this is something I still remember till this day this is like the most terrifying memories I have from that time as a child and yeah. this was American soldiers yeah so the, both of these memories the bomb that was also when yeah. the US came yeah these are your first memories this is actually yeah, my yeah my first memories of that yeah if you meet anyone now including Tarek we all been through the same story I'm just lucky that I didn't actually lose any uh, member of my family, but a lot of people did. So you were living in Baghdad. Yeah. The American invasion happened and then a civil war broke out. Yeah. You moved to Syria. Mm -hmm. A revolution happened and another civil war broke out. Yeah. Then you moved to Mosul, mm -hmm. which ended up becoming one of the main cities that ISIS took over. Took over. Yeah. And then you had to flee a third time. Yeah. We had to start our life from zero three times, which is pretty... You just understand it and you try to change it. When I travel, when I see people and I tell them Iraq, like the, it's always a reaction is something bad. They say like, oh, is there war still going on in there? It's either a conflict or bombing or uh, don't go to Iraq, it's very dangerous, or it would never show you this. Do you feel that you get to have your impact in changing that perception? People actually tell me directly that, like, we came to Iraq because of some posts or pictures or trips that you have done, and it started from one person, and then now it's spreading. And that reminds me actually what I'm doing and what's other people doing is actually very important and doing something. And I 1000% agree with the concept of butterfly effect, ripple effect. You know, you can, yeah. it can equally have a negative force or it can have a positive force. A lot of us at some point, including myself, I just wanted to leave. But then when I think about it, it's just, this is my home. And if I'm leaving, who will build that home? If there was a um, perception change that you could have in people outside, about Iraqis, what, what would you want it to be? Iraqi people are just like any normal humans. They have the same dreams, they have the same um, hopes, and they are actually hungry to meet new people. People actually want to show you the good side, and yeah. it can get extreme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that, um, that peace will continue to prevail and that people's perception of this place will mature as our understanding and experience of it becomes more known and um, I'm grateful to get to do this story with you. Oh, we should go. It looks like our train to the concert is going. Yeah. So. I was curious to see and experience this more casual and modern side of Baghdad. And Aya did not hold back on taking me to all sorts of unexpected places and events. And here's a bit of a recap of some of the silliness we got into in the evenings. <laughs> Where, what, what is going on? We are having fun. <laughs> I gotta say, I was not expecting to see whatever this is. Hey, man. Turn around for a second. Oh my god! <laughs> he wants to be in the camera. Hi! What's your name? He's trying to say what's your name. Thomas, nice to meet you. <laughs> right. We are going to a concert. Is he famous? Very famous. My childhood crush. Yeah. <laughs> what is this place? What it's is it? like networking place. Baghdad is just continuing to be full of surprises. Karaoke room. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to go watch an Iraqi Stars League, the professional football league of Iraq. We're walking out on the field. Somehow we got access to this. How far can we go? <laughs> so most of these players play for the Iraqi national team. Played a huge part in 2007 at the peak of conflict within the country. They went on to bring the Asia Cup back home. In many ways, it united the different people from Iraq behind their football team. There was a slogan at that time, which was, I'm an Iraqi and at the peak time of conflict between the various different uh, factions in the country. For me, it's one of my favorite aspects about sports is that it can really transcend beliefs, transcend culture, transcend politics, and ultimately bring us all behind a group of 11 guys or girls playing their best at the peak physical level. Yeah. 
seeing both some elements of the normal life here in Baghdad and also some of the major historical sites and now I'm just excited to come back. I'm terrified. I'm afraid of the water so... <laughs> Perfect. No way, I'm not getting on that. Thank you. <laughs> come on Aya, you got it. Aya is seeking major discomfort right now. Are you okay? Who first? Man first. <laughs> Yeah, come on, I you high got high. it. <laughs> Good idea? No. <laughs> <laughs> Last sunset. A lot of people trying to tell me that it was a bad idea to come here. Nice to meet you. And I'm glad I listen to my own intuition in this moment and to the people that I know have the actual information of what it would be like to come here. Ultimately, like a decision like this is a personal one. You have to weigh your risks on your own, but I'm very happy that I didn't succumb to the fear that I did have for a while before coming here. For me, the trips like this is, and stories like this, my dream with these is that they build bridges more than burn them, which is what the media seems to be doing all over and I'm happy to have had an all-Iraqi team to do it. Yeah, thank you for coming here. 